Last week I, I talked about uh, the four emotions that tend to surface when our way isn't working, when we need to align our lives or some area of our lives with God differently. And, and there are a lot of different biblical examples of this, but I talked about um, discouragement and frustration, uh, anger and fatigue where you just feel worn out. Did you experience some of those during that season? Yeah, I, I, it was a great sermon last week, and as you were saying them, I'm basically checking them off because I felt like I experienced all four of those. At the top of the list for me were anxiety and, and, and the fatigue piece. Um, after I left Southeast, the very next week, I began an interim ministry out of state at a church that uh, was going through a real time of, of confusion, of chaos, of conflict. And so I go from this extremely healthy congregation to each week not knowing what was going on in, in the news, what, what was taking place in that particular uh, volatile situation. And uh, it, was, it was a night and day change for me, but that's where, where God wanted me to be, and I know that's where I was supposed to be. But I think that took a toll on me over time. Uh, additionally, my, my dad, um, his dementia was uh, increasing rapidly. And uh, to see your dad, some of you all understand what that's like, to see a parent kind of slipping away before your eyes was, was difficult. Around the same time, uh, some of my adult children were going through some uh, really difficult circumstances and seasons of life. And uh, many of you have gone through that as well. Um, we moved my dad into a memory wing. Uh, in, in some ways, as strange as this will sound, uh, in some ways that was actually tougher on me than his death. Because you, you know you're gonna be saying goodbye whether he's still alive in that shell for another five or 10 years, but it's just that process. And um, through that time, I just, uh, the culmination was in my, my father passing away a couple of months after that. And through that time, I, I started pulling away from people. And I didn't realize that. And you all know me. You know I'm a people person. That energizes me. I love to be around people. But uh, Beth started noticing and realizing that uh, I was pulling back from people and just kind of staying to myself. And so she kept saying, I think you need to get checked out. I think there's some things going on here that go beyond just... Uh, uh, what, what it is you've been facing. And, and I did and uh, was diagnosed with depression, uh, something that I never thought would have ever happened, uh, that I would, felt I would never experience. And, uh, and yet it was in that time and, and through all that took place through that particular season uh, that I, I really had to wrestle with my faith and and try to realize whether or not, you know, God wanted me to continue to minister, uh, if he wanted to continue to use me. I had a counselor at that time say to me, uh, depression will either lead you toward addiction or isolation if, if you let it. And I thought, well, obviously I'm moving toward isolation. And um, you might think that's the better of the two. Hmm. But neither one of them are good ones. And uh, what I, I learned was that that was Satan's ploy with me was to try to isolate me and get me to pull back from people. And, and yet God wired each and every one of us for connection. I, I love how when you were going through that, Beth, you, know, we, you use the word encourage. And that's the word I would use with my wife too. Like they encourage us. But, but and when we say mm -hmm. encourage... We mean, we mean encourage, but we also mean challenge, right? Like yeah. having her say, hey, here's what I see. I know for me, having my wife say, hey, you, you've just not been yourself. Like, I know this isn't who you are, who you want to be. Ha having that help makes all the difference. It's that balance of, of truth and love yeah. and encouragement when I needed it, but also a kick in the pants of, hey, you haven't, you haven't gotten out and had lunch with anybody yeah. 
recently. You haven't done this or that. And so there was this part of her that was, was pushing me. And uh, I do think the connection is the key. Uh, I, I just want to point out that, that those things, just because all of a sudden I say, okay, I'm going to turn to the Lord on this. I can't handle this in the flesh. I'm going to rely on the spirit. I just want to make certain you understand it doesn't, it didn't happen overnight. Mm. It was, it became a long process for me. And it was a process that was painful and it was uh, sometimes two steps forward and one step back. But uh, it was a process where I, I had, had to learn that, you know, I'm, I'm going to have to depend upon the Lord and it's a slow process. So what I started doing was I, I dug into God's word and I wasn't planning on doing a word study, but I started, I started going through the Psalms. I knew David had been through a whole bunch of junk in his life. And so I thought, you know, I can learn from how he handled it. And so I started reading through the Psalms and I just started seeing one word pop out at me and it was the word refuge. I just saw that time and time again, David would say, he, he, he is my rock, he is my refuge, he is my fortress. And so I, I just started underlining the word refuge every time I would come across it. And uh, so that's, I would look forward to reading my Bible each day to see whether or not the word refuge was gonna pop up. It pops up, I think, like 43 times in, in the book of Psalms. And over time, what happened was uh, I, I began to run to my refuge. Yeah. And uh, Psalm, I'm just read a couple of verses that meant a lot to me during that time. Psalm 9.9, the Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. Uh, Psalm 91, verse two, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God, in whom I trust. And I, I drew closer to him and saw him as my refuge, my safe place. And um, you've heard me talk about the redwoods of, of California. You used to minister in California. Did yeah. you see those sometimes? Yeah, yeah, or? we went up, drove through the trees. And, yeah, yeah, it's crazy. 200, 300 feet high, these, these redwood trees, sequoias. And uh, a lot of interesting facts about them. They grow about 10 feet a year and, uh, in height. But it's interesting. You would think they would have a very deep root system, but these tall trees instead, they have a shallow root system because their roots go outward rather than, than downward. Someone said that the, the giant redwoods are literally holding one another up. Hmm. But there's one, one fascinating fact that I learned just a couple months ago. And that is that somehow... The way God made the redwoods is that if a tree nearby them is going through a difficult time or is sick, the other trees around it will send their nutrients in the direction of the tree that's hurting and they will put their own growth on hold so that they can come to the rescue and help the other one out. Mm. 